Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. In the last episode, I finished sculpting my newest Rubbersaw Tyrannosaurus Rex, including all of the articulation parts too. Now, in this video, I will show you how I molded the entire thing. If you haven't watched the other episodes yet, I highly recommend you go and have a look at those first. I will show you how I made two different types of molds and we'll start with the easiest one which is the block mold. What we'll need first is some foam board, the actual thing that you want to mold, some plastic cups and super glue. I'll explain more in detail later what the cups are for. First of all we need to glue the actual model that we want to mold onto a surface which is this foam board right here. We need to glue it down because there might be a chance that when we pour the silicon the actual model could float up to the surface and and we don't want that to happen. So we'll be using the cup as an actual container where we're gonna pour the silicon into, like a surrounding wall around the model that we want to mold, like so. And we will be super gluing it down thoroughly because we don't want the silicon to actually pour out <laughs> of any hole. So right here, we will be super gluing the ever loving cray up <laughs> out of it because believe me, silicon goes everywhere and you don't want it to go anywhere else than where you want it to be. I'm using super glue because I have tons of it. It might be better to use hot glue because that is a lot denser. It's easier to seal any holes with that. But as I said, I've got tons of super glue and that's not a problem for me. Okay, so I just repeated the same thing onto the other part that needs molding. And remember when you're cutting the plastic cups to use a very sharp blade and make sure you cut very straight. So for this next part, I will be cutting the top of that cup or the bottom actually, and pretty much doing the exact same thing on all the other flat parts that can be glued onto a surface without affecting the cast at all. As you can see, I went around and put more super glue around just to be sure that when we pour the silicon, it won't go anywhere else. As you can see, I have used the plastic cups on everything that could be used with the cups. But for this part, I needed to make the walls out of cardboard due to the size and shape. This right here is the actual molding silicon itself. When using the silicon, we need rubber gloves, stirring sticks, cups, and obviously the actual models themselves. Some scales come in handy too. So this silicon rubber is comprised of two parts, the rubber itself and the catalyst. The catalyst is that pinkish red liquid inside of that smaller bottle. By mixing them together at a 10 to one ratio, you get this dense liquid right here that you pour onto the models that you want to mold. Depending on the type of catalyst, the curing time varies significantly. You saw earlier that I was tapping the cup down repeatedly and that was just to help the air bubbles escape from the silicon because you don't want any air bubbles in the molds because that could affect the quality of the mold and the casts themselves. For this next part, I will still be doing some block molds, but this this is a little bit more complicated. With these cocktail sticks, I am gluing onto the model. I'm actually creating some bleeder holes. Bleeder holes actually help air escape from the mold when casting. And that is very important because it is very, very easy to get air bubbles into your casts. There being some holes into the mold, it actually helps prevent that problem. I made some bleeder holes onto the inside of the mouth too. It looks weird, but trust me, it helps a lot. I made some walls around the parts that need molding with foam board and the plastic cups again. As you can see, I have prepared the arms, the head and the jaw and the legs. On the legs, I have added this straw which will actually act as a pour hole. That is where we're gonna pour the casting material into the mold. Once everything is completely sealed, I repeated the same process and poured the silicon rubber mixed with the catalyst. And that's the easy part. And now comes the difficult part, which I really, <laughs> I really despise doing. No, actually, no, I don't. It's, it's fun, but it's just a, it's just a bit, <laughs> It's just a bit of a long process, that's all. So what I'm doing here is I'm tracing the silhouette of the body onto some foam board. Now I need to point out something. This type of mold should be a fiberglass jacket mold. Now, because of COVID and all of that, I can't use fiberglass. You need to use fiberglass in a well-ventilated area. 
So I came up with an alternative and if some professional mold makers saw this video, they're probably going to freak out and be completely disgusted by how I did this mold, but it worked. And if it worked, it worked. Anyway, here I have cut the silhouette of the dinosaur out. Because this is a two part mold, we're going to need to pour silicon on one half of the sculpt first. And then once one side of the mold is done, we can flip it over and do the other side. So here I'm using foam board to make the separation between the two parts of the mold. That foam foam board silhouette goes exactly down the middle of the figure. Now we need a way of keeping the figure from rocking all over the place. So we need to kind of keep it still in order to help us build the wall around it. Usually you'd be using plastiline or plasticine or clay. But again, I like using masking tape because I'm weird and it's a lot less messy. I forgot to mention to cut a foam board base on which we're actually working and sticking everything onto. But I think you could have guessed from the video. I do realize that this is a lot to take in. Molding isn't an easy job. Here I'm using masking tape to help the foam board silhouette stay up in the right position. And I'm using masking tape here to fill in the gaps around the figure. We don't want any holes here because when we pour the silicon again, silicon goes everywhere and you want it to be completely sealed up. So it's just a case of closing every hole around the edge and making it as strong as possible, which is why I'm putting more masking tape. So once I did that, I went around everything except for the model itself with PVA glue that helps seal everything up properly. I made sure that when using the PVA glue, I went right up to the actual model itself, but making sure I did not touch it at all because that would affect the sculpt itself. Now this border around the sculpt is actually called the flange. Next, I use these polystyrene balls. I cut them up in half and use them as keys. Keys help the two parts of the mold join together properly. So after gluing them all around the figure on the flange, it's time to build some walls in order to pour the silicon. I'm gluing the foam board walls down with super glue and then taping it all up again, just to reinforce it and make sure it's properly sealed. Make sure to double and triple check everything. We do not want the silicon to go anywhere else. I'm not putting any mold release agent on it yet because silicon doesn't stick to anything but itself. We're going to use mold release agent when we do the other side. So once the rubber silicon is mixed, I used a normal paintbrush to kind of paint the silicon rubber all over the figure. I do this because it helps the silicon go in every single nook and cranny of the figure. So it picks up all the detail. This is the first layer of three. The first layer is to pick all the detail up. The second is to reinforce it. And the third is going to be a lot thicker. Usually you mix in some thickening agent or thixotropic agent into the rubber itself to make it a lot more dense, almost paste like. Actually, now I think about it, it's almost like frosting on a cake. Now that helps the silicon to stay where it should be. If we just used liquid silicon again, it would just pour down onto the flange and not be thick enough on the actual sculpt itself. For a silicon mold to work properly and to not tear when casting, it needs to be at least five millimeters thick all around. So the thickening agent or thixotropic is actually quite expensive. I decided to go the cheaper route by using silicon cork. That is more paste-like, but I decided to go even further by mixing cornstarch with it, basically making proto putty. And we'll basically squish it onto the second layer of the silicon. In that way, we could control the thickness of the whole mold a lot better and it will be a tiny bit cheaper. So this is the first layer of silicon complete. To be able to do the second layer of silicon, we have to wait for this to set. Make sure you do not touch it at all because any oils on your hands will actually prevent the layers of silicon from bonding to each other. And we don't want that to happen because we don't want the layers to separate while taking this apart. So once the first layer was set, I poured this second layer on it. This time we didn't need the paintbrush as this pour wasn't for detail, but just to strengthen the first one. So this is the 100% silicon cork. It is acetic silicon, which is the one that smells like vinegar when you use it. All we have to do is just squeeze it out of the bottle and mix it in with the cornstarch until it becomes this kind of putty material that we can actually use with our bare hands once it's completely mixed with the cornstarch, mind you, and push it onto the second layer of silicon. 
Make sure you do this once the second layer is completely set. I'm not wearing any gloves at the moment because it is much easier to handle without gloves, but I am still making sure not to touch the previous layers of silicon at all with my bare hands. Also, any oils in the skin will not affect the putty in the slightest. So for the next minute, I'll be pressing an even layer all around the mold. So usually once all the silicon layers have been set, that is when you do the fiberglass jacket. Obviously I can't use fiberglass indoors, so I will be using fastcast, which is a different kind of resin. It's still toxic, but it's not as bad as fiberglass. This resin doesn't require any kind of fiberglass mat, which goes everywhere. So when using fastcast resin, you have to be really really careful because it is very toxic still. It's not so much about the smell, but the fumes are really bad for you. So you need to wear absolutely 100% a respirator mask and have all the windows open. You also do not want this material to get in contact with your skin because it can cause some pretty serious allergic reactions. So like Milliput Epoxy Putty, it is comprised of two parts. By mixing the two parts equally, it creates a chemical reaction which allows it to harden up. Now speaking about Milliput, I will be using Milliput to actually make the rest of the jacket over the actual figure itself. I used the fastcast resin just to strengthen the flanges. So before applying the milliput, I actually used a blade to score some lines into the fastcast, which will help the milliput to actually stick properly and grip onto the fastcast. Then I used some water to smooth out the milliput. I recommend once it's all set and hardened up, to go over it with PVA glue or just any kind of glue, just to make sure it all glues together into one solid piece. So once it was all set, I glued some foam board on the back of it just to strengthen it up and make it flat and neat and to make sure that it's all parallel to the surface. So I flipped it round and completely got rid of that foam board wall we built at the beginning, revealing the figure itself. You can see there the space where the foam board flange was and where the keys were too. Now we have to repeat all of that process again, but on the other side. Make sure you use Use Vaseline or petroleum jelly or mold release agent onto the silicon flanges because we do not want the new layers of silicon to stick to the other silicon. So again, I built some walls around it and I poured all the silicon layers, did the putty again and the fast cast and then the foam board. So once all of that is done, we are halfway through these molds. Yes, it is a very long process, but now we can take the figure out of the mold and start thinking about molding the inside of the figure. Yes, we need to make the inside of the figure first with Milliput. This will allow us to actually be able to cast a hollow rubber figure. So I am inserting about a two to three millimeter thick layer of Milliput inside the mold. This is exactly how the rubber cast will actually look like inside. So once that is set, I made sure to use the petroleum jelly again all over the flanges of both parts of the mold. Then I built a wall around with masking tape again, and we will repeat the same exact procedure as earlier with the silicon layers. This time we will be adding some bleeder holes and a pour hole too, using cocktail sticks and a straw, which is where we're going to pour the rubber inside the mold once it's all done. Like so, they need to be positioned in a very strategic spot. You want the pour hole to be in the middle so it reaches every single part of the mold. This time around, we don't really need a detailed layer of silicon. So I just went and mixed a whole batch of silicon and poured it in, waited for it to set and mix some proto putty and then pour some fast cast last. Once we have done that on both sides, this is the mold completed and it should look something like this. So I hope that was clear enough because it was a lot to take in. I will see you in the next episode where I will be casting a rubber Tyrannosaurus Rex. Hey, Sick Merch is available on Redbubble. We have t-shirts, mugs, water bottles, and other cool stuff, but that's not all. On my Etsy store, you can find my rubber saws as well as sign prints. So what are you waiting for? Just go and click the links in the description. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me as it helps me do what I love 
for you. You help me buy materials, and most of all, you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps. If you like my videos, please press the like button. And you could uh, consider subscribing. It's free. Oh, and don't forget to press the notification bell button because you don't want to miss any of my new stuff, right? I'm gonna say bye now because when you gotta go, you gotta go. I will see you in the next one.